I'm very, very delighted to have with me Sara Al Salman. Sara is the Director of Business Development and Growth Markets uh, for the Middle MENA region at LinkedIn. Sara, if you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and perhaps how long have you been with uh, LinkedIn and a bit about your uh, career journey. Sure, thank you, Hibba. So my name is Sara Al Salman. I've been in the tech industry since 13 years. I started my career with HP. And then four years ago, I decided to do a bit, um, a shift in my career and I went to digital media. I joined LinkedIn back in 2017 and I joined LinkedIn to support them in their talent solution, which is the recruitment solution. And then last year, I decided also to change my career a little bit and move to marketing. You know, business people, we keep jumping from finance, accounting, marketing. We can, and this is, this is the best thing about the MBA's programs, but you need to come up with a decision eventually and decide which sector you would like to stay in and which division exactly. So definitely marketing is um, something I'm passionate about and I'm gonna continue. Uh, hopefully in this field. I'm going to make sure to take you through a journey of the LinkedIn um, Rock Your Profile um, session. Um, uh, during this journey, we're going to cover how can you enhance your profile. I also decided to add, um, I actually decided to add it last night. I wanted to make sure that I add this, uh, a part in the presentation to differentiate between the social media platforms. And answering your question, Hiba, why do people in the Middle East not use LinkedIn as a professional network and they keep using others? I came up with like, um, I was inspired to be honest from a slide that I saw in the US um, uh, LinkedIn team. They're using like a donuts example. So I made sure that I uh, brought, a, brought um, a regional example. I'm gonna take you through it um, in a couple of minutes. Also, um, after having the perfect profile, after understanding the difference between the social media platform, I'm gonna make sure um, we share with you some tips on how can you find jobs using LinkedIn platform. Plus, um, uh, we can add uh, the, I added the, the communication strategy on how to communicate on LinkedIn. Probably you're not looking for a job now and you're happy uh, within your current job, but you need to stay in touch and you need to um, uh, connect professionally. So I'm going to make sure also to take you through this. Hopefully by end of the session, uh, most of you will have the perfect profile and you're going to be um, up and active uh, on the platform as professionals. And hopefully I, I still like I want to make sure that everybody uses LinkedIn the right way because I always find people in my connection using LinkedIn uh, for like good mornings and good nights and such things. And this is not LinkedIn. LinkedIn is the place yeah. where you share your professional and um, uh, uh, let's say updates so what's happening with you what's happening uh, even with your education this is the right place to share uh, such posts and such feeds uh Sarah, i think you, we're good Sarah, sure. I, I just wanted to ask would you recommend that uh you know uh, guests joining us today perhaps go through their linkedin profile while you're going through the session and try to um, you know, use your lips, uh, uh, use your tips right away. Of course, of course. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna even go through the steps one by one, so you can like cross check. Okay, have your profile next to you. Have yeah. your notebook next to you uh, as you. well, because maybe you cannot like edit at the same time, but uh, you can be inspired with some tips uh, and some ideas. And this session is recorded, so uh, for those who are unable to take notes or you're at your workplace, um, just make sure to email me and I'll send you the slides, the recordings. Awesome. Can we start or do you want us to yes. start? So uh, we will keep admitting people throughout the session. I know some of them would jo join later, but that's fine. Um, so let's sure. get started. Sure, sure. I'm going to promise you one thing. I'll do my best um, to finish on time, if not before time. Um, but uh, please make sure you um, write all of your questions either in the chat or even like by end of the um, uh, by end of the session, you can even like unmute yourself and ask me immediately. OK, let me share my screen over here. And let's start. 
Okay. So I know that um, most of you, when you left college, you um, had so many uh, things to do. You wanted to make a career decision. You wanted um, uh, to you wanted to make sure that you find the right job or the find internship, uh, the right internship. Also, you, um, probably some of you decided not to even find uh, a job, and like you, you said, okay, let me start my own business, or you know what, let me make an academic decision and continue uh, moving from uh, master's to PhD and so on. Um, and some of you took the research as a career path. So no matter what's, what's, what's the reason or what's the next step after leaving college, um, we wanna make sure that you can use LinkedIn to help you in the right way. Uh, LinkedIn decided to change their vision and mission. Um, and that was like six years ago when they moved from um, uh, connect, uh, uh, connect people to uh, job opportunities. And they changed the word of job opportunities to economic opportunities, because they wanted to make sure that it's not only about finding the right job, you might find the right business partner, you might find the right research um, um, uh, or you might find um, 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 a colleague who can help you to complete your academic um, uh, path. So most of these things comes on, on why are we here today? We, we are here today because we wanna make sure that you jump to your career, you unlock your um, potential uh, using LinkedIn, you enhance your skills, and this is through the LinkedIn learning solutions. And then um, we want to make sure that you understand the industry that you're working in. And um, also, as I promised, we kept a part uh, on we want you to network as a professional and we want you to reach out um, and, or, or to communicate in the, uh, in the platform the right way. And I'll even give you some examples on how to network like a pro. Um, uh, this is when I told you, well, this is when I sp spoke earlier about the LinkedIn mission. Uh, the LinkedIn mission today, they want to connect the world uh, professional to become more productive and, and more successful. While the vision is create economic opportunities for every member in the globe, uh, global workforce. And this is exactly what they did when they changed the world of creating job opportunities to economic opportunities. Um, today, LinkedIn have the largest professional network where they have members, they have companies, they have jo uh, jobs, they have skills, and they have schools. And I'll tell you what do we mean by each one of them. Um, uh, as of this morning, we have 722 million members. This slide should be updated. Um, and I think we will, uh, we will um, starting updating it by next, uh, by next week, if I'm not mistaken. 55 million companies are registered. And these companies come to LinkedIn to post their news, add uh, more information about their products and services, and also post their jobs. 11 million jobs has been posted during um, 2020, um, which is during last year. 36,000 6, skills are added in the platform. And why do we care about skills? Because we want to make sure that each member writes the skills in the right way. For example, if I come today and add like in my skills a nursing uh, uh, skills, the system will not count the skill because I'm an account director. Uh, I studied business my whole life. So how come do I have such skills? So the artificial intelligence in the system will also make sure that the skills that doesn't make sense are removed because we use the skills to understand what kind of courses can we provide as LinkedIn learning, plus to provide the reports about the skills gap and what's happening uh, in them in the demand and supply of the of the market uh, of the skills market. 90,000 schools are registered and today um, your university is part of the schools uh, under uh, LinkedIn uh, because they, they are, they, you, you guys have a page and you're posting and so on. Enough speaking about LinkedIn and let's move to the uh, social media. Uh, this is when I told you I'm using a more, more um, a regional example. Um, uh, if you have a picture of 
gamuts. And gamuts is some, something similar to donuts. And you want to post this picture in the different social media platform. For example, if you post it on uh, Facebook, you will say, I like this gamut. If you post it on Snap in, uh, on Snapchat, then you will ask people to watch uh, watch me eating eating this um, gamut, and it's going to be more or less a video content. On Instagram, you can add a comment of here's a cool photo of my gamut. And, and so on and so forth. And every single social media platform, you will uh, uh, use it differently. On, on WhatsApp, for example, anyone wants gamat or um, I, have, I have an extra gamat plate who wants to eat. But if you have the exact same picture and you are sharing it using LinkedIn, the, the usage of the picture will be I hope to operate a Gamat franchise uh, one day. And this is you speaking about your future uh, dreams and future career. Number two, you can post the exact same picture and you're, you can say, I'm looking for a job at the Gamat company. Uh, you can uh, use it. Number three is I have three years of experience making Gamat and look at my Gamat over here. Number four, my top skills uh, are Gamat production and sales. And you can also get hired in a game ad company. Number five, uh, you can even um, recommend a former uh, colleague who used to work in game ad. And you, then you can use your connection to refer people who can do the exact same job. And this is exactly the difference between using the same picture, the exact same picture on LinkedIn and using it on the other social media platform. We want to make sure we help you to identify your uh, digital professional identity. And when I say the digi digital professional identity, because we do believe that whomever is, is hold, like holding CVs and moving from a company to a company is something that might die very soon. We do believe that the online presence can help you to find a job because resumes will not be hold, held in your hand and, and you, you moving from a company to a company. Re resumes will move to a digital, and it is moving now to a digital um, uh, format, and then you can share it via email or via other social uh, media platforms. Today, do you think your future em employer is Googling you? Do you think they are searching? Actually, 80% of the recruiters use social media to check out the students and the candidates. And when they use social media, imagine if they're going to Google me today. I even used myself as an example. If, I, if they're going to Google me today, the first thing that they will find my Twitter account, but the second thing will be my LinkedIn account because I'm trying to push content in my LinkedIn account and make it active, up and active, um, where they can see. Um, uh, and, and, and please try to Google yourself um, and, and see where do you stand and make. Uh, and this, by the way, this helped me to write uh, to, to have the exact correct uh, name. So make, make sure that your name is written correctly, your full name is written correctly as well. Today, your professional brand is a key. And we want to make sure that uh, this professional brand um, um, is, is your key for the new opportunities. It can give you credibility. It can attract business contacts you. And it can drive, drive referrers as well. You can take a referrer from um, a professor in the university, someone who you, um, you worked with uh, previously. And you can even tag it and add it to your profile. And I'll show you how to do it as well in, uh, in a couple of minutes. How do I use my other social media platform? I use Snapchat to post whatever meal I cooked this morning. Uh, Instagram will have my uh, personal photos and like uh, history photos of me. Uh, Twitter is in between where I'm sharing things that I look as a professional sometime, but at the same time, I can like speak about my favorite football uh, player. Or I can I can move a little bit personal, but not to that extreme. And this is the difference between the platforms and between LinkedIn. But if you open my LinkedIn profile today, and um, uh, uh, can you find 
like from all of the the um, the previous slides, the one that I shared through Snapchat and Twitter and through uh, and through Instagram as well. Do you think this is an indicator, uh, and this will help me to take the right job, or the employer did not find anything related um, related to what skills I have, which education I I studied? If the recruiter opens my LinkedIn pro profile, then they will be able to see where do I stand today and what's my current position today. They would be able to see my previous experience and the historical data about my previous experience. They would, able, uh, they would be able to see that um, and the education, which, which universities I studied in and which degree as well I took, they will be able to understand what kind of license and certificate I took, what kind of skills do I have, and who endorsed me uh, for these skills. And guess what? Number one activity on LinkedIn today is actually people viewing other people's profile. It's not looking for a job or finding a job or the the or finding a course on LinkedIn. They are they are viewing other people profiles because they want to make sure that they get the best of the best when it comes to candidates and recruiters are are uh, are sometimes are proactive and they do go and search um, for uh, the best profile moving to the steps of the profile uh, because i want to make sure that all of you uh, in the session and knowing what's the best profile step one uh, in the profile is add a photo. And please promise me, when you add the photo, do not have a photo with Burj Khalifa in the background or a park in the background or Times Square in the background because this is your professional network. Imagine yourself, and I'm sorry, it's so sad, but imagine yourself taking a passport photo, I, but smile, and you have a chance to change it. It's not like if you have it, um, if you have a passport photo, I'm sure that most of our passport photo are horrible, but the LinkedIn pro, the LinkedIn um, uh, photo should be more or less the same, but with a smile and with imagine yourself when you take this photo is like how when I work for you or when I be part of the organization, this is this is this is how will you see me exactly. Um, uh, I would definitely recommend having a gray, black, white, um, background instead of having a background that doesn't that doesn't show you that doesn't show your face. Uh, also, um, uh, when you take this photo, make sure that you add it because the the, um, uh, the your profile will be viewed twenty time twenty one times more um, uh, if you have uh, if you have a photo. Also, people who have uh, a photo are thirty six time uh, times um, gets recruiter or in-mail messages. Uh, so please make sure that your photo is update, updated. Um, and please promise me not to have a photo. I even took a photo of myself um, like three years ago and I feel that I'm changing. I'm losing weight, I'm gaining weight. So I'm trying to make sure that I add a photo every two to three years, not every five or 10 years because I'm sure that we're changing from a time to a time. Also, uh, step two is definitely add the industry. And when I say the industry, if you don't have a job today, then the industry should be your, the industry that you studied in. If you have a job, then the industry should be the industry that you are working for. For example, my industry today, yes, I studied, um, yes, I studied uh, corporate social responsibility, but my industry in the profile is internet and internet it's because that linkedin is an internet company so if you're working the industry should be your company industry if you're not working then it should be your education background industry step three um, try to write the best summary about yourself and uh, I've, I've i received so many questions about the summary on what to add and what not to add and from giving um, sessions the last three years um, um, at LinkedIn, I realized that the best summary can be is, who are you today? It's a combination between who are you today? What 
are your what were your biggest achievements uh, historically and where are you heading in the future so try not to add more details about the don't speak about i used to work for microsoft and i used to work for hp or you, no don't don't write such things because the, the second part which is the experience part will have all of these information the summary should be about you professionally you um working on a big project while you were a student you um want to join uh, or want to be want to become a leader in uh, in the tech company or work for a top leading company don't identify which or which company exactly because um the experience will have the details uh, of the company and you never know you might end up like thinking that okay i want to work for this company and then you have a um, another offer from another company and then you actually like this company so try to make sure that the summary um is a combination between these three and at the same time it shows you professionally not personally step number 3 will be the detailed uh, about the experience and i want to highlight also I'm trying to tell you what are the things or the mistakes that we've been seeing uh, here at LinkedIn. You come, you start writing your experience, you start writing the first experience, and then in the uh, description of the experience, you start writing it as if it's a paragraph. And then you go to the second experience, and then you start writing your description as bullet points you need to have consistency it's so either you decide are you going to go with bullet points for all of all the jobs that you added or a, a small uh, paragraph about each job just make sure that the flow um, looks uh, right and it's consistent as well Step number five is the work examples. This is something new that we added uh, here in, uh, in LinkedIn. After the experience, you can actually add a, a link or you can upload a video or a link from, a YouTube, from the YouTube that shows um, uh, examples of your work. For example, if you work for a company and it's not a well-known company let's say xyz company and it's not very well known but you were part of a conference that this company uh, organized or you were part of a project that this company was responsible about you can actually add it as a media and this will show anyone who knows about this company or doesn't know about this company um, a confirmation on what kind of projects are you, are you working on or the company is working on as well the volunteering experience is very important and it's very important to differentiate between the working experience and the volunteering experience and why am i saying that make sure if you add the volunteering experience you add it in the right place because recruiters today can come and filter people who have for example three to seven years of experience and because of the volunteering you are you you are flagged as 10 years experience you might lose a job opportunity because you did not write the experience in the right way today linkedin have the vo you can write the volunteering experience in um in a box and you can write the working experience in a different box box you can even write the projects in a different box so today each single um each single uh, topic have a different box and you can add it uh, to it the skills is uh, is something very important because i'm so sad that we still see people writing uh, microsoft office as a skill i'm 100% sure that all of us know how to use a laptop nowadays and this microsoft office used to be used to become a, like a very fancy skills back in the days but today Promise me one thing, if you're going to go and write your skills, write the niche skills, the, the skills that are either you studied or you know for a fact that you know it, like fi being um, a financial uh, analyst or a, a coding um, skill or, or try to make sure that it's the niche skills that differentiate you between others and maybe one tip um, that i can give over here when i started adding the skills 
I looked into the jobs that I want to work for and I looked into the description and what and I looked into what are the roles and responsibilities under each role uh, under each uh, job opportunity and I I got I, I, I was inspired by the words that they used and I I immediately added them under the skills so this is this is a tip that you can do number 2 you can add as much as you want skills by the way you can add 10 20 30 don't 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 limit yourself with the skills if you're 100 percent sure that you you have it uh, i by the way recruiters uh, there are, there are so many people who ask me if recruiters takes endorsement uh, as um, as like something to look for when they want to hire and most of the recruiters that i met here in the middle east they said no because People can endorse you for uh, for for a skill, and they they didn't they never worked for you, so they didn't they don't take it seriously as much as the referrers. Speaking about the referrers and the recommendation, you can actually ask um, people for recommendation in the platform, and you can also give people recommendation. I would definitely recommend you to take the recommendation, most of the recommendation from your professors at the university because they are, um, um, their professors usually when they write the recommendation, especially if it's in a public uh, letter, they write it in details and it might uh, help you to find the perfect job. Also, um, uh, um, you can add as much as you want. You can add projects, accomplishments, uh, publications, education, uh, certificates. So there's a difference between certificate and education. There's a difference between courses and education. So make sure that you add each single point in the right place um, because this is this will definitely impact the search for the recruiters and i'll tell you why uh, because today linkedin provide a service or a license for the recruiters um, in the companies and they give them like an access on um, a tool that can help them to search better um, uh, using linkedin recruiter and when they use linkedin recruiter the recruiters can filter whatever they want to filter they can filter the courses that they're looking for, the certificates, the education, the projects. So make sure that you add each and single part in the right place. And guess what? Nine out of 10 company recruiters uses LinkedIn. Uh, and um, uh, because, because it's nine out of 10, we want you to make sure that you add um, the each and single uh, information in the right field. We ask the recruiters on what where are the parts that they look for, and the the five musts in your profile is definitely the education, the photo, the experience. The volunteering experience, especially for the people who don't have that much of working experience and the skills. And actually 75% of hiring managers look at your profile to learn more about the candidate before joining the interview. And I want you to do the same as well. I want you to make sure if you're gonna join any interview, you, you uh, genuinely ask the recruiter or wh whomever is calling you from the HR on, who am I meeting exactly? Get their names, get the right names and look into their LinkedIn profile. So you can start the conversation in the right way. Probably they studied in, at the same university or they went to the same places or you have someone who worked in a company and so on. So you can, st you can feel more comfortable uh, during your uh, interview with them. So after the part of how to uh, fix your profile. We wanna make sure that we help you to understand how can you get hired and how can you explore the career uh, and connect with people who can help you, uh, um, uh, who can help you land that job. So to do that, 
we know that your to-do list is overwhelming. You want to make sure that until the end, you're getting the good grades. And uh, you want to make sure that you, you join the right uh, student club. You want to have fun. You want to sleep. You want to choose a career. You want to research companies. You want to contact people who can help. You, can, you want to search for jobs. So the list is 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 literally overwhelming and 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 because we know it's tough and it's hard we want to make sure that you use the linkedin recruiter the right way number one start mapping yourself for the future alumni tool and when i say that make sure that your education is linked to the right university so today if you um Today, if you graduated from this program, then you need to make sure that the way that you're writing the university is the right way. So you need to write the, and then wait, and then space, and then Manchester University. So wait for the right, correct name or the drop down uh, and then select it. By, by this, you will be linked to the alumni tool for the university. And why, why am I saying that? Because we want to make sure that when whomever is opening the university page today on LinkedIn um, uh, is seeing you as part of their alumni. Also, make sure that you get referrals uh, from, uh, from the right person. We want to make sure that you're getting it from the right person or the right professor or the right, uh, uh, um, uh, let's say, um, we wouldn't recommend to get a referral from a colleague. Uh, we definitely recommend you to take it from a manager or from a professor. Connecting with, with people uh, and asking them for a job is definitely uh, something, is a very tricky person, is a very tricky thing. And you need to make sure that you check the uh, friends connection, the family, the classmates, the mentors, the teachers, and the prof um, professors. And make sure that whenever you send them an invitation or a request, that you're personalizing this invitation for them because you want them to remember you and you want them to accept you, your request for connection. We want to make you, we want you to make sure that you are adding two main things, the why, and and what exactly to say the why is um you can like tell them uh, because i'm interested in this company and i would like to join and i want someone um to connect me with this also make sure that you are saying the right thing who are you writing it because like i received so many emails from people asking me for jobs at linkedin and it's obvious that today my position at linkedin is not recruitment it's not talent acquisition it's not hr so make sure that whenever you send an email you send it to the right person or at least to to, to the right department who can help you um uh, or who can like um uh, address you to the right contact also, you can definitely look into the jobs that we have in the platform, and you can set up uh, set a, set up um, a, um, a, a an alert. And the way that you set up an alert, you go to the company page, and then you um, 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 uh, you activate the alert that is coming from the company page. One thing that you can do. We want you to learn uh, learn what's uh, what's there, and check from the uh, browser. Make sure that the job description. Please don't apply for jobs that are not relevant. Read the job description. Read who is your connection. Read more about the organization, um, because so you can be very ready when the recruiter is contacting you. Follow companies because following companies will help you to get um, a notification about the companies. Uh, follow influencers because influencers can even tell you more information about what's happening in the market, what's the trend in the market, and follow industries um, uh, in in LinkedIn. Like make sure that you flag whatever industry you're looking for. All of these will help you to uh, be ready whenever a recruiter is contacting you. 
So your dream job is very close and it's very closer than you think. I want to make sure that I also give you the uh, beyond your LinkedIn profile and it's your voice uh, on LinkedIn. Your voice is on LinkedIn comes from two main things, the updates and the, the publishing. The updates is usually the posts that you can see. And the, uh, the publishing is usually the articles uh, or the longer content. It's not the short content. And I'll show you examples uh, right now. Today, you can communicate uh, on LinkedIn by sharing an update. And when you share an update, you have two options. You can start by sharing a post or start by sharing an article. And definitely the, uh, the post is usually a smaller content while the article is the longer content. And I'll show you an example. So today, when you share an update on LinkedIn or a post, you can share it through three different ways. Number one, you can come and create your own content. And as you can see, it's this is me, taking a photo and then writing um, a specific thing about an event that I went for for Accenture Middle East. I wrote the content and I, I started mentioning people, uh, tagging the um, company, uh, adding the right hashtags and so on. And this is a content that I created myself and it will be posted in my feed. The second thing, everything that you comment on will show in your feeds. Uh, and why am I saying that? Because I want you to make sure that it's it's different than other social media platforms. If a company posted something and you, you're commenting on, on this, it will show to your connection as a feed as well. And then the third thing, whatever things that you love or you like, sorry, it will show also in your feeds. And as you can see, this is Nujud Al-Hajjar. Nujud is the director of the uh, Saudi Arabian General Investment Authority. And she she wrote a specific post. And I came and I liked this post. Oh, see all, all the way to the right uh, left um, uh, side in, 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 the, in the corner, you will see that Sarah Salman likes this. So please make sure whenever you like something, you like something that is professional and it will be fruitful and helpful for your connection because we want to make sure that you are um, you're also building um, uh, building the right uh, and professional uh, communication strategy in LinkedIn, on LinkedIn. Writing an article is a bit different than writing a post. Writing an article, as I as I mentioned, is a is the um, uh, the longer content. And as you can see, uh, one of my colleagues over here, her name is Rima Harbi. She works for LinkedIn, and she wrote a full article uh, about the Saudi youth in uh, in the few the Saudi youth future careers. And uh, when she wrote it, it was like a longer content with some photos. Um, um, she even uh, posted it and uh, posted it as an as an article, not as a uh, feed or a small post. I think, uh, as I promised you, uh, um, that we we're gonna keep some time for the questions. I will stop sharing now because I want to make sure that I can read your questions. And please unmute yourself if you have any question. I really hope that this is helpful, and I really hope that um, uh, you took something with you today, and, and you learned something new about LinkedIn.